Hey everyone, my name is Vanelin, and in this video we're going to have a look at how you can optimize your prompts using DSPY. We're going to be using our own custom dataset that contains articles from financial news. And on that dataset, we're going to be doing sentiment analysis using a local model. We're going to start by creating a baseline of understanding how good our current prompt is doing. And then we're going to be using DSPY with the internal prompt optimizer to have a look at how much better our sentiment extraction accuracy is going to get using the prompt optimization techniques. Let's get started. If you want to get access to the complete source code that I'm going to show you throughout this video, as well as the complete AI engineering academy, go and subscribe to MLX Pro. There you can find a complete AI engineering academy that starts from Python, PyTorch and statistical machine learning methods. Then it goes through deploying your own complete machine learning pipeline. Then you're going to go through LOMs, how you can use tools, structural outputs and a lag chain. Then you're going to be building Arax, CAX and complete AI agents. So if you want to get better at AI engineering, go and subscribe to MLX Pro. Thank you. DSPY is a project by Stanford NLP that contains two main features that you might be interested in as an AI or prompt engineer. The first one is the ability to fine tune models based on your own datasets and the optimizers that they provide. And the other one is to just optimize the prompts that you're going to get through your models. In this video, I'm going to show you the second approach. This approach doesn't fine tune the model at all. It doesn't change the weights or it doesn't add any adapters. What it does is to just change the prompt. The optimizer that we're going to be using will require from us to have a teacher model and this teacher model is going to be used as one that is going to construct the better prompts for the model. And then the other one is going to be the student model. In our case, both of those models are actually going to be WOCO models, Gemma 3 or Quen 3. And both of those models are going to be running locally on my WOCO machine using OAMA. I'm in my WOCO cursor instance, and these are the libraries that we're going to be using. We are also installing the DSPY library itself. And here you can see the imports for it. We're going to be using the evaluation pipeline from it as well. Also, I'm seeding the random number generators from NumPy and the random library from Python. So after that, I'm going to be initializing the two large language models. In this case, the teacher model is going to be the Quen3 4 billion parameter model. These are going to be hosted on our local OAMA instance. So this is the URL that these LMs are going to be called on. And the model that is going to be doing the evaluation on top of it, we're going to be using Gemma3 1 billion parameter model. So, of course, you can try and change use these models with anything else. But in my case, uh, this is very good uh, in order to compare the performance of this uh, relatively small geometry 1 billion parameter model with an unoptimized and optimized by DSPY prompt. Then I'm going to be configuring the model that we're going to be using as a student right here. This is going to be called uh, on the configure LOM right here. So then uh, you can use the created instance of the large language model with DSPY just as a regular model. And here you can see that when you call this, for example, with a prompt of hello world, uh, you are going to get a response from the LOM. You can also pass in a temperature and other parameters that you might want to check within the documentation of the library. I have created two subsets for our evaluation. The first one contains information from the July dates for the news within the financial sector. 
and the other one are the news that we have seen in the previous video that contain uh, roughly articles from the middle of August of 2025. So we don't have an overlap within the dates that these news are actually going to be released. And in this way, we're going to be having a training data and test data, even though we are not actually training the models, just tuning the prompts. So after uh, I get this, I'm going to be getting this converted into a DSPY example. These are going to be the actual rows of data that you're going to be passing to your models. And in this case, I'm going to be passing the article text, as you can see right here the sentiment of the article and then i'm going to tell the model that this is going to be using as input only the text uh, which is actually a combination of the title and the text of the article itself so i'm going to be doing the same thing from the, the training data and the test data and as you can see our training data is limited to 200 articles while the test data contains a thousand examples. So we're going to see how well using just as little as 200 examples, our prompt is going to be improved or probably not improved after we run the experiments. And this is what this DSPY example looks like. It is essentially a data structure that will contain our text and sentiment for the classification and prompt optimization task. Our next job is to prepare the sentiment classification pipeline using the structures and methods provided by DSPY. In this case, I'm going to be having this validate sentiment function, which essentially is going to check whether or not the predicted sentiment is exactly the same as that from the example from the dataset. And this is the prompt that we're going to be starting with. Of course, you can do a bit more prompt engineering on top of that, but this was the prompt that we have used during the evaluation of our models in the previous video. So you can see that this is a relatively simple. You're an expert financial analyst specializing in analyzing financial news articles. Analyze the following article and extract the overall sentiment, positive, negative, or neutral. And then we're going to get this signature from DSPY. Here, this comment is actually added to the prompt itself, classify sentiment of a given news article. Then this is going to be the input. This is going to be the text that we're going to be passing in. And here I'm going to be specifying the possible categories for the sentiment positive, negative, or neutral, and then the confidence. This is an optional field. You might, of course, remove this, which is going to tell us how confident the LOM is. Note that this is just an output of a token that the model thinks it should represent confidence. It is not confidence in the real case of classical machine learning models. Then we're going to be adding the instructions to the prompt. So this is going to be the prompt that we have just created. And you can see here clearly the instructions. You are an expert financial analyst specializing, etc., etc. So uh, what you can also see here is that if we didn't provide these instructions, uh, this uh, is, was going to be added to the prompt itself. But then for each of the fields, you can see that we are getting uh, pretty much the correct annotation for these fields along with the different categories that we have for the positive, negative and neutral sentiment. So after this is complete, we can uh, essentially call the predict pipeline within the DSPI library and provide our own signature that we have just created. And then I'm going to be passing a sample data row from the training data right here. And as you can see, this is actually giving us a prediction of sentiment negative with a confidence of 0.7. And then you can see the complete output of this operation. Uh, here is the system message. This is entirely written or templated by the DSPY library. 
your input fields are text, sentiment, and confidence. Uh, you can see here pasted exactly as we have just described them. All interactions will be structured in the following way with the appropriate values filled in. Note that this is still coming from the library. Inputs are uh, outputs with the sentiment and the confidence. And uh, then you can see here that we are passing in also the prompt instructions. And then uh, here we have uh, example text earnings. Misses are going to get punished more than usual, etc. And this is the response that the model is going to return for this particular example. Using the DSPY evaluate, we can now evaluate the performance of our initial prompt. And as you can see, I'm passing in the test data here and using the evaluator with the classification pipeline that we have just created and then with the metric for validations of the sentiment. And as you can see here, this took uh, roughly, uh, actually it took roughly like five to 10 minutes, but this, since this is a cached response, it was way quicker. But other than that, you can see that the actual accuracy, which is the only metric that we are currently uh, using right here, uh, is 61%. And this is uh, also able to give you this confidence table along with the predicted and example sentiment. So you can use and look through this resulting pandas data frame to look where the model has high predictions, but they were incorrect, etc. The actual prompt optimization is going to be carried out with the Mi Pro optimizer. And here you can see that in order to use this optimizer, you are going to be specifying the metric that you want to optimize. Then how hard do you think that the optimization needs to be carried out? The prompting model, which is going to be the model that is going to be the teacher and optimizing the prompt itself. And finally, the model that we're going to be using for the task, in this case, classification of the sentiment. Then you're going to be calling tp.compile and in here, you're going to be specifying your prediction pipeline along with the training data that you have. Note that this took roughly 17 minutes to complete on my machine. And here you can see that we have a summary of the experiment before it is actually starting. It is having 10 different trials and it is adding a few short examples from the data set itself in order to get a better optimized prompt for you. And the validation set size is actually half of what we had. So in essence, we are only using 100 examples of the articles that this model is going to be running in order to optimize our prompts. And here you can see that it is actually bootstrapping and creating instructions. On top of that, you have a very detailed overview along with all of the experiments that it run. And know that on some of the examples, we have actually a decrease in the accuracy and the performance. But the average metric that we got here on the last trial was actually 71%. So this is much, much better. It also continued with other trials. And after that 71, we got a new high score, 74%. So this is the actual prompt that we got that it is much more optimized, at least for our own use case. And this is the prompt that the DSPY actually returned. As a critical financial analyst, you must evaluate the sentiment and confidence level of the following high stakes financial news articles. Your analysis will directly influence investment decisions and market trends. Note that this prompt was actually bootstrapped from me and Quen3 4 billion parameter model. Identify whether the article conveys a positive, negative, or neutral sentiment, etc. etc. I'm not sure why the confidence score is 0 to 5, but that's probably for another consideration. Consider the potential impact on investor behavior, market volatility, and macroeconomic factors described in the text. So 
probably somebody who is a very well versed within the financial sentiment analysis or financial news etc is going to be able to write such a detailed prompt but for someone who is a very much a new within this field probably not so this optimization looks that it is did his job and we're going to be doing the final evaluation using that so on our test data note that this data wasn't anywhere provided during the prompt optimization that we got with our 1001 examples we actually have 60 uh, sorry 76 percent accuracy on the sentiment so we have more than 15 percent increase compared to the unoptimized prompt and of course here you can also go through the uh, confidence and the examples in which we got uh, each of the examples note that still those predictions within our dataset are actually from another LM and no humans were actually confirming the validity of this dataset so keep that in mind and finally after you have this optimized prompt you can save it in order to use it for later in production environments the json file itself contains four different examples that were taken from the dataset with uh, augmented true so maybe they were a bit tuned from the model with a sentiment and confidence etc you can see the results here along with the instructions that we have actually seen that the model has provided as a output of our prompt so keep in mind that when you are optimizing your models with dspy you are going to be uh, able to use this file when deploying your lm to production in order to optimize your prompts themselves so this is it for this video we've seen how you can optimize your prompts even if you're working with a completely local lms on your own custom datasets in this example we got the dspy optimizer mipro v2 to give us 15 percent more accuracy on our sentiment classification task i'm not saying that you're going to get improvement on every prompt that you have or I'm not saying that your prompt engineering techniques are now worthless but in this case it looks like that after you have done some iterations of your prompts it might be worthwhile to check with DSPI and have an even better prompt thank you for watching guys please like share and subscribe also join the discord channel that i'm going to link down into the description of this video again if you want to get access to the complete source code i want the complete ai engineering academy go and subscribe to mlx pro thank you and i'll see you in the next one bye